The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for RadioLawTalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, RadioLawTalk.com. Good, good day, good morning, good whatever time you're listening to this show, everybody. My name is Todd Kunin. Welcome to Radio Law Talk. And the first thing you might recognize as you hear my voice is, wait a minute, that's not Fred Penny. Fred Penny. It's Fred. so soothing, though. It, well, well, I. Tra- <laughs> yes, you hear another voice. We're going to get to that in just in a, a second. In an FM nighttime job yes. kind of way. Hey, everyone, welcome to Radio Law Talk. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about all the things that affect your life from the bench. Uh, Yes, I'm Todd Kunin. Behind the glass is the one and only Cal Hunter. Hello. Uh, Fred Penny and Denise Dirks, both on assignment this week, although I have it on good authority that they will be back next week. And so the question you may have is, good heavens, are we going to have to listen to you and Cal, just the two of you? The answer to that question is no, because... (laughs) Seated to my left, coming off the bench, filling in for Denise Dirks and Fred Penny is none other than Seth Madden. Seth, a recent admittee to the California State Bar, a law school graduate who comes in as a father of two, three, and maybe another one on the way children. A man who learned to draft legal briefs by looking at his own underwear (laughs) until he realized that brief meant something different. We bring you Seth Madden. Seth, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. I am uh, way underqualified for that introduction. Except for the briefs part. (laughs) Yes. He looks at his underwear, writes the brief, and goes, now you tell me. Now. (laughs) Well, I'm going to have to let my supervising attorney know that there's a whole lot of work that needs to be reviewed. (laughs) Wow. I didn't know that I could cite Fruit of the Loom as legal authority. Wow. <laughs> Seth Madden, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm amazing, to be honest with you. Amazing. And what makes it so amazing? I'm running on about four and a half hours of sleep. And be- that's because? Um, every, I think it's every Friday, there's a little town up north of here called Auburn. Yes. yes. And Auburn has an event called Fast Fridays. Uh huh. Are you familiar with that? I have heard of it. Yes. Okay. Fast Fridays involves motorcycle races. Um, and it's kind of like a dirt mud track. Uh, motorcycles pretty much just go around the track on their side, just full throttle, full bore all the way around. Well, uh, like once a month, they have a special, and it's called Sidecar. And so it's actually motorcycles. With a sidecar? With a sidecar. <laughs> Nothing dangerous about that. Oh, no. I'll no. show you some pictures on break. <laughs> oh, I've, see, I've seen the stuff you posted. <laughs> but they, they're literally, so the sidecar guy is like on his side, essentially dragging in the mud with like a brake to try to get the motorcycle to go around the corner. Now, does the sidecar lean contrary to the turn or into the turn? It leans, so it's got... You know, the the two wheels in line, and it's got one wheel on the outside that's away from the turn, but the guy is leaning into the turn. Into the turn, okay. That, the, yeah, let me tell you, that's just faith right there. I. Yeah, and actually what was pretty cool about it was... I think it's just plain dumb, but... <laughs> <laughs> the, the smell of race fuel burning. Oh, that was, does uh, change your, your view. You're yeah, right. Yeah, and then, you know, of course all the legal advertisements laying around the... Uh, Around the track. I thought that was a convenient place for those. Yeah. Were you injured in an accident? <laughs> Did you do something stupid? Did you injured in an accident? We're not surprised. <laughs> yeah. That's a, definitely an assumption of the risk. I, I don't oh know who gosh. you would sue. Well, 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 Seth, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know folks might have uh, recognized your name in the past as the infamous call screener. You have participated in Radio Law Talk, but now you're in the... You know, like the kid who finally was invited to sit at the adult table at Thanksgiving, <laughs> you've made it to the show. The big leagues, man. The big leagues. So um, originally from Indiana, um, I moved to uh, – oh. Sorry. T- Todd's buzzing us. The, yeah, i got to uh... make sure that's off. <laughs> Every time you hear my phone like that, it means somebody got their wings. <laughs> well, we're moving on now, we're moving on to the east side. 
Yes. So I, uh, I've been all over the place. Indiana, I lived in, uh, I did a little school in Idaho, a little school in Utah, uh, a whole lot of law school in Arizona, and uh, moved up here for a job. Got a wife, three and a half kids, one on the way, one due in September. Uh, two boys, one girl, and then the one on the way is a girl, so pretty even keeled there. Um, I do personal injury law, so I actually worked um, under uh, a personal injury attorney for about two and a half years uh, while studying for the bar and, and taking the bar. And uh, when I passed, I just kind of assumed the assumed the position at the law firm. And I don't know if I put it like that, <laughs> but uh... <laughs> usually that's the people getting sued. But anyway, <laughs> so so you do personal injury law, yep. and you've been doing that um, about a year and a half, year and a half, now? over a year, yeah. Well, outstanding. Welcome to the show. Now, Seth, are, all, are, are the cases all called? I mean, how do you come across a personal injury case? Because the old image, which is illegal, by the way, <laughs> it is of lawyers chasing ambulances and dropping cards on people as they're carted off to the hospital. And that's illegal in California to do that. Right. So, so how do you get your cases? Well, I don't chase the ambulances. I just drive up and down Highway 80 and throw my business cards out on the freeway. <laughs> There's no need. Right? Yes. <laughs> I don't chase the ambulances. Yeah. I just pay them off to have them drive through the drive through yeah. at my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of it's call in. Um, we we do a lot of referral systems. Um, our website, our social media. Uh, surprisingly, and this is the 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 managing partner of the firm. And this is something Todd and I kind of talked about beforehand. Was the um, you know what the the challenges that we face in the legal system today, or the legal world, I should say, is uh, your online presence. You know, um, the partner of the firm that I that I work for now. He, he said, man, back in the day, it was all Yellow Pages. You know, and Yellow Pages are a thing of the past. Well, the Yellow Pages are, are now online. Yellow yeah. Pages, I mean, it's the same thing. It's the last point of purchase. People don't understand. Yellow Pages were referred to when the time came to make a buy. You'd go, well, let me look up that plumber. Boom, there it is. But all of the stuff leading up to that decision is the other marketing that you do. The radio, yeah. television, billboards, signs, whatever it is you do. So that when the decision time comes and they see the face online, they go, uh, oh, yeah, I know that guy, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how the system works. And, and, yeah. and, the, and the big difference there, well, the similarity is in the Yellow Pages, you could have the small little tiny ad that was just the you know, little bloop that, that probably they gave you for free. To your, say, your name your, and your, your number. Your name there. Right, right, right. And then if you want to take out the full page ad, if you want to have your name, it's always some sort of an attorney or something like that on the back cover of the Yellow Pages. Yeah, you pay through the nose for that. Well, now... You talked about you wanted to find a plumber. You had to go and pull out the book and look through it. How's that going to compete with uh, somebody who just picks up their phone and says, hey, Siri, find me plumbers in my area? Yeah. You know, And then that comes up. And so what you have now are people that compete for the top ranking. I want Google to... I want Google to put my name before everybody else's. Sure, because in the Yellow Pages, that only was a fight that was had once a year. Yes. Yeah. Now that, it's held every, every day. day. It, yeah. it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. You know those little ads that they have on the side or at the top of Google where it says you'll have – when you bring up – a, you do a query, you bring up the page, you're looking for a lawyer, and the top three ads, if you look there, it says add, and then they get to the search results. So the search, right? patch, search is called the snack pack, right? So, yeah. But those ads up there, those people are bidding for position top on spot. Google – and they pay, and they bid by saying, I will pay Google X amount per click. So every time somebody clicks on this ad, I'll pay Google 50 cents, a buck, whatever, for these keywords. And it can get kind of expensive. But when we come back, we're going to hop into the time-honored tradition of case or no case. Seth Madden joining us here on Radio Law Talk. Folks, thanks for joining us. Fred and Denise are on assignment. They'll be back next week. But uh, I think... Are his points going to go to Fred? Uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, give him that, we'll give him that uh, option. Swing we'll and a miss. That choice. <laughs> All right. Radio Law Talk will continue. Reminder that no matter when you're listening to the show now, you can hear Radio Law Talk live every Saturday, 9 to noon, on RadioLawTalk.com. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. 
I am Cameron Levitt, Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In. Ready to grow with you. I'm going to quick quack car wash, get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny, sexy, just because I want to don't drive dirty, going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest by far, we're talking three skinny minutes sitting right in your car wash, a hundred feet of cloth, washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick quack, will spruce her up just like that. You'll be happy looking snappy, you'll be glad you was at the quick quack. Car wash, get on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick quack in the local area. Get in your car, get in your truck, get on the road and come visit the dock. Quick quack car wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried counting calories, I took pills, eating and eating, and then more eating. I really wanted to stop, but nothing could make me stop. At one point, it was so bad that I just felt like giving up. I felt so alone like nobody else could possibly understand we understand we're overeaters anonymous and we have helped thousands of people just like you people who want to stop their compulsive eating and start living a healthy rewarding life overeaters anonymous help me get my life back now i eat in a way that's healthy and good for me i never realized what i was missing out on with oa i am living again and loving it. Start living the life you deserve with help from Overeaters Anonymous. Find us on the web at oa.org. Where's Fred? This is Radio Law Talk with Frederick Penny. Yeah, where is Fred? You know, that for the next... For the next little bit, we're going to have the radio law talk with Fred Penny, and then my voice is going to come Where's on. Fred? You know, I can feel the disappointment spreading throughout the country. <laughs> Cal, what do you have on tap for us for Case or No Case? Well, you know, I have several things. I'm just wondering if this would be a good time to get the whole party started, and I get the sense that it is, so here we go. Now All it's right. time to play Case or No Case. Yay! All right, I take you now to London, England. That's right, across the uh, across the pond here. I'm going to take you to London, England, and uh, let's see if I can 
to get a call coming in, so I'll just block the lines for the moment. <laughs> Caller, please call back after case or no case, because I can't have the phone ringing and do case or no case. It's just too distracting. Okay. <laughs> He's definitely not the ventriloquist that can drink water and operate the dummy at the but same like time. Bang, well, begging like, people to call, and then cow, hang, hang, cow hangs yeah, up on him. I can, but I'm not going to. <laughs> so, in, in London, a couple decided to upgrade their condo with a wooden floor. They thought it was lovely. Their neighbors thought, it's too noisy. So the neighbors wondered what they might do about it. They went and talked to the folks with the new loud floor. And the neighbors said, it's our condo, and we can put in a new floor if we wish. Deal with it. So the offended neighbors said, no, it's too noisy. So they sought counsel over a wooden floor. And so I ask you, by the way, first off, uh, for whom, Mr. Madden, will you be playing? Would you like your points to go toward Denise Dirks? Or Fred Penny. Mm. Or Todd Cunin. Or Todd Cunin, <laughs> for that matter. Insuring, yeah, we could, we could work this so that I'll answer one way, you answer the other, and, a win-win. and I come out with points. Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. But anyway. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what are the, do the points have the opportunity to go back to the house for Cal to distribute as he pleases? I could do that, yes. <laughs> I, could, I could absolutely do that. And by the way, the current score, let me bring up the score sheet oh, yeah, here Yeah, I'll quickly. need to know that before as I As things stand, Fred ha- already has 15 points. Denise has eight. Todd has 12. Oh, swing with Denise then. Okay, you're going to go with Denise. All right, very well. And so the question is, I'm going to start with you because you're the new guy on the block today. Uh, is this quibble, kerfluffle over a wooden floor an actual case? And if so, what is the outcome? Were those uh, English terms? Yes, quibble and kerfluffle okay. are two. You that, hear them frequently in London. <laughs> it's definitely going to determine the outcome of this. Yeah. Um, I think they've learned that kerfluffle is, in, is a legal term, isn't it, Todd? I'm pretty sure. Well, anyway. Uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say that it's a case. Okay. And I'm also going to say that they ruled in favor of the neighbors. So you're saying it's that the people case. who complained won. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Mr. Kunin, what say you? <laughs> he says that. Huh. Interesting. As, as if, as if, to say, we're going to talk about this in a little bit about Supreme Court opinions and how lawyers can be wrong, but the way Cal says, hmm, interesting. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> hey, I'll take it really, all day long. Whatever. Okay. I would uh, never say that. He made it through law school. I barely made it through high school. Come on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I never saw a bar I couldn't pass. So. Excuse me? <laughs> all right. So we've got, this, we've got this case coming out of London here. And um, let's see what we've got. Is, uh, they put in the hardwood floors. And the people on the downstairs don't like it, that they've got the hardwood floors in the upstairs. And it's probably enhanced by the fact that they wear wooden shoes as they walk around. Oh, they're around. not Dutch. No, they're not all right, Dutch. All right. no, no, not no, Dutch. No, okay, no, all right. But no. they got these big bunions, oh, corns on the feet, and they don't, <laughs> they don't clip the toenails the at all, and they walk around, and, yeah. you know, you got all this stuff going on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with my, uh, with, with my broadcast partner here for the day that, yes, this is a case. And I just, for the sake of variety, no real legal reasoning at all, I'm going to say that that the apartment owner that put the hardwood flows in, <laughs> I realize I'm now doing an accent from a completely different... Now, now we've gone to a Cockney sound. ...different yes. portion <laughs> of uh, across the pond. You right, right. say, you, you can't tell me I can't put in hardwood flows in my house. <laughs> all right? Hmm. I'm going to do it. I'm going to walk around. You're not going to complain about it. And uh, and I, I say they win. Uh, the the homeowner, the condo owner that put in the floors wins. Um, they they prevail. And I only say that because if it is they do something they put in and it's a nuisance, that that kind of a case is just too benign. So I think that you did it to kind of make it. Well, I mean, I have some questions about it. All right, in, in no. doing some research about this, we I'm thinking to answers. myself: Is there not a castle doctrine in England? What a man does in his own castle is if protected, it's his own right to do so. I mean, I'm just, is there no such thing? Am I, I missing something? I believe there's a castle doctrine. See, we built this <laughs> castle in a swamp. Oh. All right. <laughs> we built okay. it with my own bad hands. But I mean, you know what I'm saying. What you do in your own home, you want to have a wooden floor, put in a wooden floor. It's your yeah. house. I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, but that would be way too easy an answer, wouldn't it? I, I, you know, I agree. I think it would be too easy of an answer. I have to assume that there is some sort of 
castle doctrine. You can do what you can do. Um, in the United States, I would imagine we have the same thing, unless you live in a community that has a homeowners association, and then you've all given it away. Ah, condo right there. Okay, <laughs> the condo yeah. rights. But yes, okay, I, so... I, I think that it's a, a victory for the condo owner. So let's do this. For those of you who say it is a case, that would be both of you, I say congratulations. You each get a point. That's it. All right, way to go. Now, for those of you who say that the homeowner, the people putting in the wooden floor prevailed, that would be Todd, right? Yes. And the answer there is... Oh, my gosh. Yes. I know. Yes. Victory uh, lap. The offending couple could have settled... They could have perhaps installed carpet or maybe put in some soundproofing to mitigate the racket caused by their new wooden floor. But they fought and lost and now have to pay. I'm giving you this in dollars. I went, you know, converted. <laughs> then I then have to pay $135,277.26 in damages oh and and $1,259,630 in legal fees. One million plus One in legal, legal fees, fees for a hardwood yeah, floor? Yeah. And I'm not making this was up. Was this it, condo like on the second floor I, of another condo? I'm wondering. I don't know. I, I was, I blew me away when I saw the numbers. That's why I... You did, know, if they install the wood floor yeah. upstairs, you know, and we're, we're the, the ground floor condo and they're the second story condo, I could see, but... I, I'm, just, I'm just curious about the damages because... Look, what damages, other than inconvenience and nuisance, it seems like the person that, unless they're calling damages the cost to replace their own hardwood floors in their own apartment, in their own condo, but wow. Anyway, that's, that's case or no case. We're heading to break. We'll be back after these messages. Yay. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please, don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. That's 800-918-1376. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 
800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. All right, guys, we need to have you read some lines for our disclaimer promo. But first, can anybody tell me what a disclaimer is? Right then. Well, uh, Denise, you go ahead. Non uti consilius por purpurium juris consult. Latin, that's a nice touch. Thank you, Denise. Next time we'll try it in English if that's okay. Fred, how about you? Cal, I don't want to read all this. Can we just tell the people that we're discussing general legal issues and they should hire their own attorney instead of relying on what we have to say here? Well, we could, I guess. Uh, uh, Chris? I'm not going to be there anyway. Why have me do it? <laughs> Let's, Let's have, have Todd, Todd do it. it. Me? Read disclaimers? Why, I couldn't. <clears throat> the information you hear on Radio Law Talk is general. The preceding promo was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. Just a tip from your friends at Radio Law Talk. Be sure to read our disclaimers on RadioLawTalk.com as well. When you were a little kid and you thought about what you wanted to be, teaching was at the top of your list. But things changed. And as you got older, teaching didn't seem like the best option anymore. So you're thinking you'll be something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Now you want to be a doctor. You don't think teachers save lives? 25 at a time. An actress? Try playing a different role every time the bell rings. How about a scientist? Ever heard of physics? Chemistry? Who do you think teaches that? Teachers today are breaking down obstacles finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, and taking learning far beyond the four walls of the classroom. It's time to recognize that great things are happening in teaching and put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Find out how you can make more at teach.org. Make more. Teach. Brought to you by Teach and the Ad Council. I like the Amadrosa Valley. You're listening to Radio Law Talk. And now back to the show. All right. We are back here at Radio Law Talk. Todd Kunin, and I'm filling in for Fred Penny. And I guess that means uh, the person to my left, Seth Madden, you'll be filling in for Denise Dirks. No, that I'm work? sitting in Todd's chair. Well, no, well, you're sitting in my chair, but you know your points in case or no case went to Denise. I just so hit two, didn't I? She did. You, you did. She got two because of you, so she's up to ten. Uh, Fred stays at fifteen, but I picked up one point on him. I guess Should I'm we conveniently do just case or no case for the remainder of the? Yeah, we, we, show? we're going to do six cases or no cases <laughs> per hour. I think uh, Cal just you know all the color went out of his face there. Um, no. What I want to talk about right now is we have uh, the U.S. Supreme Court just finished their most recent term, the 2018 to 2019 term. And we have some statistics about how things broke down. And one of the things that I thought was interesting as I'm looking at the stats is the difference between opinions of Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, there were so many people that thought that those two, both appointed by President Trump, were going to be in lockstep. Uh, any conservative issue that came the court's way, they're going to rule conservatively. I mean, you heard this throughout the confirmation process. Everybody was uh, complaining that anything remotely close to the left was going to be dead, that the court was going to rule this way. Roe v. Wade's out. Yeah, and yeah. that, in the first term, I mean, they, they didn't obviously, they haven't decided a Roe v. Wade-oriented issue to this point, but the fears about those two being in lockstep with each other and ruling conservatively on all cases has not materialized. In fact, I believe statistically, those two disagreed more. They they disagreed with each other at a higher percentage rate. It's like 35% of the cases, they were on opposite ends, and that is the highest statistic for any two justices appointed by the same president Wow. Uh, going in. So clearly that didn't hold out. But <laughs> before we get to that, I just want to talk about stats in general. 
cases that came to the Supreme Court from you know, the First Circuit, Second Circuit, Third Circuit, you know, we're in the Ninth Circuit here where we broadcast from, and what some of those stats were, it's kind of telling. You look at that, there were 74 total cases that were decided by the Supreme Court from all of the circuits in addition to state courts and district court. And looking at the Ninth Circuit, 14 of the 74 came out of the Ninth Circuit here on the West Coast. That, that's, yeah. the, that's the highest single percentage. 19% of all the cases decided came out of the Ninth Circuit. Now, the thing that is telling is that of the 14 <laughs> cases that came from the Ninth Circuit, 12 decisions from the Ninth Circuit were reversed by the Supreme Court on appeal. A whopping 85.71%. That is, that's amazing to me. That is, that's really high. The only, the next highest one is uh, the Seventh Circuit, where they had, uh, they brought one course, one case in, one was decided, and it was reversed. Yes. So at 100%. Yeah, 100% <laughs> reversal rate. But there was only one case. Now, it's got to be the Dakotas. Th this raises a couple of issues here, but Cal, you have a... How can these geniuses in black robes, <laughs> and I'm saying that for both the Supremes and the Ninth, how can they both disagree on the fundamental points of the law in so many cases? It just doesn't make sense. How can that be? Well, look, there's a reason they're called judges and not... The reason why we have human beings as judges and we don't have computers doing everything. I, I've heard this – use an analogy here. I've heard people talk about manned versus unmanned drones in battle and, and flight. And pilots who pilot an aircraft will say, you can come up with all the technology you want. And nothing substitute – there is no substitute for the judgment of a human being sitting in the cockpit – of a jet and and being able to make those decisions and i think that the same thing is true in the law they are judges and they interpret the law and they bring the human element to it it's not just a computer where you punch in a certain set of facts hit go and the algorithm says well this is the decision that could be and, and quite frankly although that might have been inconceivable 40 years ago, I could see somebody, one of these geniuses at Google or whatever, coming up with an algorithm that considers all of the different facts and circumstances and applicable law and renders an opinion. Whether it's right or wrong, I could see an algorithm doing that. But we would never want to replace that for human beings because they look at this and they come up with their idea. And let's, let's be clear here. It's not like – we see this statistic here where 12 of the 14 cases were overturned. But I don't think that in all 12 instances it was a unanimous decision on the part of the U.S. Supreme Court overturning those cases. Okay, but, so, so let's say it was a 5-4 decision. Well, now, even in the U.S. Supreme Court, take a 5-4 decision. you got four people that thought the law was one way, five people that thought it was different. Reasonable minds can disagree. What if you were a traffic cop? Yes, <laughs> and you wrote 15 tickets, and you the people go to court, and in 12 of the 15 times, the judge throws them out. Do you think you'd be a traffic cop for very much longer? All day. <laughs> in, 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 12, in 12 of the 15, I would say, no, look, there, there would be an issue, because I think in a situation like that— You're misapplying the law. Hang on. Would you say that I would not be—that would be a personal decision, or do you think that my superiors would say— Time to move on. You're no well, longer that, a That's what I'm saying. The, oh, okay. the people to whom you are accountable might say, you know, officer, maybe you should be over here flying a helicopter for Metaflight or something, because obviously traffic is not your forte, <laughs> right? But but that's my point. Who holds judges accountable when they obviously get it? Maybe wrong is not a word. I think it's wrong, but contrary to the interpretation of the ultimate authority well, in the you, land. You kind of have two different scenarios to deal with there because you, the Supreme Court isn't necessarily something that you know we as everyday citizens, citizens vote into. It's a lifetime appointment. Right. And, and the same with the circuit judges. That's However, right. do we not have the ability to, um, to recall these judges? Well, yeah. Well, or retire we, them? I, I think the, the method for uh, – the method for removal of a federal judge is uh, the impeachment process to uh, have them removed from the bench. But 
I guess here's where I would disagree with the statement that they were wrong. In, in the example you used, for example, I think that the police officer are giving a very simple set of facts. Either the law said you couldn't turn left or it said you could on the red light. And, <laughs> and you look at those and, and that's an easier call. Yes, you can turn left, you can't turn right, whatever. You were speeding, you weren't speeding. And, and the decisions of the police officer to make an arrest lend themselves more to an objective view of whether or not the law was violated by that person. Uh, in the case of judicial opinions, I think it's better to use terms like we agree with this decision, we disagree, because there's a lot of I guess you could call it subjectivity on the part of judges as to whether or not a certain law applies. Let's remember that the laws that go up on appeal, the cases that go up on appeal aren't necessarily those that are cut and dried, you know, black is black, white is white, and this is – these are things where you'll hear this term a lot, cases of first impression where the court has never dealt with something like this, and they have to use different legal principles from all over – from all the decisions that have been issued before it, they come down and they say, based upon all of these different things, this is what should apply in this case, and they make a case. That That's one example. So you have cases of first impression where the, where the court is blazing the way for a new way for a circumstance to be interpreted. Then you have another one, and we'll probably talk a little bit more about this after the break because I want to get into that. But those are cases where maybe the status quo Stare decisis, and, and for those of you that don't know, stare decisis is the principle that that is generally followed in the law, which is that if a decision is handed down on a case by the highest authority, uh, it is to be followed, that <clears throat> principle is to be followed by courts in an authority lower than that. So take, for example, um, take, for example, Roe versus Wade. That was decided by the U.S. Supreme Court. That is the law of the land, and that is what controls. And other cases have to be in accordance and follow that. So another category of cases, we'll talk about this when we come back, are those where maybe the status quo needs to be challenged. And we'll talk about some instances where that happened, and that was a very good thing. But you're listening to Radio Law Talk. We're coming up on the... Uh, Three quarters after the hour. Interesting. A lot of people without basic math skills have trouble with that. So about 15 minutes to go in this section. We're going to step away, and when we come back, we'll keep the discussion going. We thank you for listening to Radio Law Talk on your favorite radio station and remind you that our podcasts are available all the time at radiolawtalk.com. So if you don't catch the whole show, just go over there and either download or stream. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, tax doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In. Ready to grow with you. 
Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. My name is Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. I've assembled an excellent team of highly experienced personal injury trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. At Penny & Associates, we will aggressively represent you and your family when someone has been injured in an accident. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. For a free initial consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or call 1-800-616-4LAW and ask for Frederick, Stewart, Rob, Kevin, Kent, or Will. That's Frederick Penny at Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers, one 800 616 for law. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. Smile. Smile, buddy. Come on. Smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. <sighs> yeah. Maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. You know how boys are. Or maybe he's teething. Oh, poor baby. I think his gums hurt. Maybe he's just tired. Or maybe his tummy hurts. He didn't eat that much. Maybe he's not ticklish. You think maybe he's scared of the dog? Maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe it's a phase. Maybe he just doesn't like smiling. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at autismspeaks.org signs, or see a doctor today for an autism screening. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better and it can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Go to the website, radiolawtalk.com. You can listen to the show there, and there's a lot of other good information, too. That's radiolawtalk.com. So we're talking about the Supreme Court and the stats for the U.S. Supreme Court and what the first term looked like. Let me uh, let me interject real quick. Sure. Um, interject away. Interject away. Sorry. Um, one of the things he was talking about before we went to break is you mentioned that uh, cases of first impression, and uh, I think I spoke to you a little bit about it on the break. But what most people don't understand is that the the law and the cases that are coming coming to the courts are like ever evolving. Um, you, you know, and, and you see this in different parts of the country, different parts of the world, where they still use law that's 150 years old, 200 years old. At the beginning of the show, Cal talked about castle doctrine. You know, you go down, let's say you go to Texas, and the, the laws in Texas, believe it or not, might be, you know, 100 years further than what the laws are in Louisiana. You know, Louisiana follows a completely different set of laws. So whenever these cases take the, whenever the courts take these cases in, on first impression, they're they're pulling in all these ideas, these different laws, uh, legal topics. It's like an abstract idea, and I think that they know that at some point something's going to be added to that, something's going to be taken away from it, or it's going to evolve into something that's completely different than what their original decision is. And a lot of laws, people are you know upset with the court systems and the treatments of victims and the treatments of um, you know violators of the law, criminals and stuff. And what they don't realize is that in most cases, the judges are simply applying an out-of-date law or a law that was decided that didn't have everything that it needed to be decided properly. And so you talked about this. It's been a while. There was that Stanford kid that was accused of uh, sexual assault, and it, essentially that judge applied the law to that kid's case. There wasn't something that, you know— that came out of the out of the out of nowhere and let that judge decide the way that he did. So he he did. He uh, the decisions that a judge lays down in sentencing, like the case there. We're going to talk about another case similar to that uh, going forward. Happened out of I believe New Jersey, 
a similar type situation where a court, and I think that judge went beyond. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, a judge a judge has a um, a sentencing range, a purview that they have to stay within. In the state of California, I mean, you look at it. When a judge hands down a sentence in a criminal case, in a felony case, the first thing they look at is, well, what is the case worth? What did the legislature say my sentencing options are in this case if I send this person to prison? And in California, they usually have three different options. It's called the low range, midterm, or the high range, uh, low, medium, and high. And the way it's supposed to work is the judge starts out at the midterm. Let's say something is a felony where you, you can go to prison for either two, three, or four years. And the judge would look at and say, okay, I'm going to apply three years initially, and then we're going to look to see if there's anything mitigating, mitigating something that is in his benefit, something that's in his favor. And if, if this is a case where I've already determined the guy should go to prison, maybe the mitigating things take me down to two years. If there's stuff that's aggravating, prior criminal history, terrible crime, all that kind of stuff, well, then maybe I'm, I'm more apt to go up to the three years, right? So you've got that. Well, judges don't always have to send somebody to prison unless it's mandatory. Mand- if it's mandatory prison, they don't have a choice. They've got to send them there, but they can put somebody on probation. If they put somebody on probation, then they look at it and say, well, all right, is there still going to be a jail time component as a result of this? And sometimes they have mandatory minimums where if granted probation, you will still have to serve X amount in jail. And in the one case, you're right, the the Stanford swimmer case, the judge imposed pretty much pretty close to the minimum of what he could have imposed. But it was still within the realm of what the legislature has had said was – acceptable in with those type charges. I want to be clear. It's acceptable on those type charges, not necessarily the facts of that case. Right. And that type of sentencing had been upheld on appeal in previous cases as that sentencing didn't violate the Constitution. So he did that. Well, the, the remedy for that initially is if you don't like that sentencing option, appeal. Uh, well, first, talk to your legislature. Talk to your legislature to get the law changed, that a case like this should not have, for example, maybe uh, even the possibility of probation if that's what you want. you got to go to prison for that. Um, if you feel like the judge abused his discretion in sentencing, then you can appeal on an abuse of discretion thing. But you're right. The judge was following stuff that had happened before. But it's not always – you shouldn't always follow the precedent. Uh, the best example that I can give of that is Dred Scott versus Sanford. Mm. Now, that was an 1857 case, and in that, the U.S. Supreme Court, in a 7-2 to two decision, ruled that African-American black people were not intended in the Constitution to be considered citizens. That, <laughs> I mean, that's a ridiculous, we look at that now and say, how can that possibly be? And if there was never any way to challenge Stare decisis, the decisions that had come before you, if you had to stick with that and you could never challenge it, well, that would still be the law. But that's not the way the judiciary works. You can challenge it, and rightfully so, and Dred Scott was overturned. It's not the law of the land. It was it was an uninformed decision at the time that it was made, and it's not the law now. And so we talk about cases that go before the Supreme Court. You can have those that are cases of first impression that we talked about. Yep. Then you can have those that go before the court where the aim is to see if the court can readdress a decision that was previously made. The Ninth Circuit seems to be a hotbed for things like that, to push the envelope, to give the Supreme Court an opportunity in some cases to say, all right, yeah, the law needs to be changed here. The law needs to be changed here. It's almost like they say, well, we'll be the ones to stand up and and ask the Supreme Court if they'll change it. And, you know, statistically, 12 times out of 14, (laughs) the Supreme Court said, thank you, but no thank you. We're leaving it the way it is. Cal. Can you court shop your appeal? Because well, to me, that may be an issue here as well. Some people say, look, this this appeal court is likely, based on their record, to lean in our direction when we file this appeal. So let's take it over to the wacky ninth, as some people call them, and see what we're going to do. Or the, or the smart ninth, as other people call them, and see what they're going to do. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to answer your question. Yes and no. 
It depends. I, I don't <laughs> think they, they can't court shop the appellate court that hears the underlying case. If you if you file a case, the original case in a certain jurisdiction, you're stuck with the appellate panel to court to which that case would normally go. I can't file a case in California and then go and seek judicial review of that in, in the uh federal district in New York. I'm, I'm stuck with California. So the way that they do that is they file their original case that they know is going to go up on appeal in the jurisdiction of the appellate court to which they originally want it. And that's why, for example, a, a good portion of the Trump of cases against Trump for all Come sorts of. of things have been filed in a jurisdiction that would have as its appeal the Ninth Circuit, which is Alaska, California, Arizona. Yes, uh, uh, Washington and Is Oregon. Washington in that one? I believe so. So, so that's what we've got, you know. And, and that's sort of the way the process is used. We talk about this. Recently, there have been cases in Alabama about uh, pro pro choice versus pro life, and you have that. And and the um, law that was written in Alabama is viewed as being very draconian on the issue of abortion, for example. And but the. What doesn't get a lot of play in the media is what the legislators have said, which is we intentionally wrote this to be strict because we want the Supreme Court to readdress the issue and we want it to go up on appeal. If my, my guess is in Alabama, if an appeal was filed and the Supreme Court decided not to hear it, if it was not taken up, they would amend the law to put in the the same safeguards and, and exceptions that people had, had wanted that they're objecting to, but they have to leave those in to ensure that it goes up on appeal because previous states haven't necessarily gone to the Supreme Court. The whole thing is to get this issue before the Supreme Court, and that's oftentimes what the appeals court is used for. And so the easiest way, too, is just uh, anything to do with the Constitution. Absolutely. That's going to do it for the first hour, folks. We've uh, sort of, I don't know, beat that horse to death. <laughs> we're, moving, uh, we're moving on. Thank you for listening to Radio Law talk and as cal has said previously if you want to catch other episodes of the show or the full three hours you can go to our podcast we would welcome you doing that and we thank you for listening to radio law talk no matter where you do it and we'll uh, we have three hours of the show every saturday so thank your station for carrying what they do carry and we'll be back You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com, a copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated.